Goat. His so name is uh, Dr. Dwayne Wright. I'm the uh, native of York, Pennsylvania, PhD from University of Georgia. Um, where is our history? Our history is everywhere around us. What we need to think about is that we have history that is not known. We have sometimes history that is um, the master narrative, meaning that we often hear about the Dr. Kings, the Rosa Parks, but oftentimes we don't talk about the history that happens at places locally, like Harrisburg, York, Pennsylvania, that were critical to the uh, civil rights movement. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about myself and then what led me to sort of wanna delve into uh, local history. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a native of York, Pennsylvania, graduated in, uh, from York High, William Penn Senior High School in 1990, uh, went off to Kutztown University to study uh, secondary mathematics, and then I got a first teaching job at Suitland High School in Maryland, uh, Prince George County, went back to Kutztown, got my master's, and then taught in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and then started my uh, doctor program down at uh, FIU in Florida in international ed development, and then got into uh, transferred to University of Georgia where I got into uh, history, history of education um, and foundations. Um, and I took a, a class called uh, Civil Rights in Small Places under my advisor, Dr. Derek Allridge, and uh, he challenged us in that class to come up with um, ideas for projects to do our papers on. And uh, I told him, and he's a Southern uh, from the South, from Rock Hill, South Carolina, and his perspective was often jaded from a sort of Southern perspective as also from at the higher education. So I challenged Dr. Alridge one day in class and said, hey doc, um, there's some things that were going on in the North that we're not talking about. And I said also some things that were going on at the uh, high school level that's not talked about in the history. So he said, you know what, you have a great idea, and he sort of challenged me, and that's where I uh, focused my um, project on uh, student activism and agency in the 60s. Um, so this year, uh, 2018, is the 50th anniversary of the 1968 Black Pride Day where students walked out of William Penn Senior High School after um, Dr. King was assassinated. But it's, it's critical because the students this year had the, the march on for life, March for Life, as well as the National Walkout Day. And a lot of students didn't realize that there were student uh, protest movements that happened prior to, so it's very fitting that we sort of look at uh, what was going on. So the impetus of the um, moment in York was the assassination of Dr. King, uh, as well as some of the um, issues that went on. Now, in the United States at that time, there was a lot of uh, injustices that took place, so students recognized that, that they couldn't uh, participate in certain decision-making bodies at school. Uh, there was a brother who was um, a janitor. His name was uh, Frank, Mr. Frank Spells, and the students were upset that they didn't give him the due respect by calling him Mr. Spells. They would just call him uh, Frank. So they was disrespecting a, a, a man who had children, who had a critical uh, position in the school, yet they weren't giving him his respect. So they had a host of issues that the students were talking about and wanted to raise. So the, the night Dr. King was assassinated, these students were meeting outside of the school amongst themselves to, to develop this sort of Black Pride Day, which they already had uh, planned on doing. And then uh, Dr. King's uh, assassination was uh, sort of the catalyst that sort of made that thing happen. There was a student who was a 10th grader, uh, and his name was uh, Lewis Woodyard, uh, and he knocked on the door and said, you, you know, the seniors, please do something. We have to do something because Dr. King was assassinated. So they uh, decided the next day, April 5th, 1968, that they weren't going to uh, attend school like they regularly would. So they went into the school that day, then they went to the principal and told them that they were going to um, meet in the auditorium and have a black-only assembly. And at this black-only assembly, they um, came up with a list of demands as well as talked about Dr. King's life and what he meant uh, to them and to the community. So they sort of celebrated his life, but also came up with some demands. Some of the demands included 
uh, they want to implement uh, Negro history in the curriculum. If you remember, uh, that was what African Americans were referred to as Negro. So they wanted Negro history. They wanted the school to hire more teachers. They wanted to hire uh, black cafeteria workers to include black food into the uh, cafeteria lines. They wanted Mr. Frank to have a better position. They wanted to allow uh, blacks to have positions on, on various um, committees at the school, this, this is decision making bodies. So they also wanted the, the school to implement the um, Temple Report. They had a report that was uh, published by a group out of Temple and they looked at the, some of the injustices in York. Um, so some of the students that were involved in this uh, movement were all seniors. At the top there's uh, Ms. Barbara uh, Malky Woodard, uh, Ms. Uh, Wendy Woodyard, um, uh, Reggie Ellis, uh, Ms. Uh, or Dr. Uh, Deborah McMillan of the trail at that time, and they were uh, critical in, in the movement to make things happen. Um, and all the students had, they, even though the students were together, they had a variety of uh, philosophical views. Some want the, school, the students to be more sort of violent or following the, uh, the uh, sort of Malcolm X camp. Some wanted a peaceful um, uh, protest, which they end up doing because they didn't want the violence to distract from what they wanted to do. So the students uh, came up with their demands. They presented them to the school board. And the school wasn't really excited about it. There was even some negative backlash. Uh, in, in one newspaper uh, article from that time, they said that their, the school will now have to fumigate the auditorium because the blacks were in there. They were trying to say that they would bring uh, roaches and other insects into the building. So uh, there was some sort of negative feedback. But for the most part, um, the students were able to change. They did include black history in the curriculum. They did hire. Uh, more uh, students, I mean more teachers. Uh, they also um, had uh, students who were elected to the student uh, senate the following year. It should also be noted that in 1967 they had their first black homecoming queen, Miss Linda Woodard, Woodward, and she. Uh, and that was another event that sort of pushed the student to be more progressive. Uh, so what I am attempting to do is to highlight uh, events like the 1968 Pride Day. Uh, we had a celebration in New York on the 5th of April of this year, and we had a number of students you know, reflect on their experiences and also had the uh, school board present the students a proclamation where they made April 5th uh, Black Pride Day across the uh, school district. So we have a lot of work to do. Hopefully this type of information can be part of the curriculum or part of the community so they can be uh, more aware of, of what's, what's happening because it's students who often make uh, the change happen. Just like we'll see the students who are leading the change for uh, gun control and safety in our schools uh, with the, the walkouts and the protests that they're pushing, just as the, it was students in the 60s who uh, were advocating for change and made change happen. So we have to continue to encourage our students to be uh, use their voice uh, to make, cha make change happen because uh, change will only happen is when we sort of press um, our issues and our demands uh, and go forward. So we have uh, any questions? So why is this important? It's just important that we make history uh, part of our local history part of the curriculum because oftentimes we uh, get tired of hearing the same story, Dr. King, Rosa Parks. So this allows folks to connect, is making the, the curriculum relevant to their lives. They may have aunts and uncles who might have been uh, involved in, in different things. So some of the parallels that are between uh, 1960 and what's going on now, it's all about social justice. We still have issues of inequality that's going on in America. So we have to continually try to fight for social justice. Because as Dr. King said, any injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. So we have to make sure we are um, including the um, pushing for social justice, whether it's for rights for students, 